we've gotten to a point with UI now where we can pretty much do whatever we want with enough time, enough code, and enough troubleshooting. With all of the built-in visuals, that is. And we have kind of neglected a lot of the visual styling options uh, in all of these things. Just because those are super context and taste sensitive, so going very in depth on them probably isn't like that relevant. But I do want to do one thing here today. And I want to show you the fact that we can pretty much anywhere that you can put in an image in a UI element, you can also put in a material, meaning that you can write an entire shader to accomplish animated effects. And in a lot of cases, that might actually be preferable to using hacked together uh, elements of UI. An example is, for instance, an HP bar. I have a couple of HP bar tutorials, but you might be tempted for an HP bar to just be a progress bar. And if you need like some animation in that HP bar uh, to animate that progress bar, have different colors, have different progress bars on top of each other, at some point, you're actually adding more widget components, which means that it's going to be more expensive to do that than just write a shader to do the things for you. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, right here. I'm going to make a material here. So we can just right click, make a material if I can select it. Uh, and we'll call this something like UIM for UI material. Uh, scrolling texture. And this works effectively the same as any other material uh, in the engine. So if you're not super familiar with materials, I have an entire playlist course getting you started and working with materials. All that is in the context of materials for 3D objects. But if we go in here and we set the material domain from surface to user interface, a lot of that stuff just disappears. And we get a screen position and a final color as output. We can also, of course, set this uh, to being translucent. And then we'll also get a opacity or masked. And then we'll get the opacity mask pin. For now, we're going to keep this at opaque. And if we just do a, a texture sample here, for instance, put that into the final color and set the texture that we're going to be using to just any texture in our project, we can see the preview here is just a 2D uh, square of our texture. Let's say that we want to add in a banner to this so that it moves. We need to give in our texture coordinates and then a speed of like 0 0.1. And now we've got a material that will take in this one texture and move it in the X direction slowly over a period of time. We can now use that UIM uh, material here to fill in this UI element. You can see it just animates. Of course, when we play the game itself as well, you can see it also animates. So that is one thing we can do. Now, we can make material instances of this material with different textures, but just like anything else, really, uh, you can go into your event graph, set your image on event constructs. Uh, we'll keep this uh, stuff around for now for the lists because I'm too lazy to get rid of it to be honest with you but if we uh, just put in a sequence and then we uh, set brush from material instead we can just make a material and do stuff with that so let's for instance uh, create a dynamic material instance of our UI material for the scrolling texture then we promote that to a variable so we'll call that material and then set that to be the material that we use. Then we can change this material at a later date and it will dynamically update our brush here because we don't need to manually then tell the brush to display something else because the brush is just displaying whatever that material says it should display. So all we need to do is say that the material needs to do uh, something else. So let's maybe uh, make this a parameter instead which has a default value of 0 0.1 but then we can uh, well, convert this to parameter call this speed and then after we set this we like delay for let's say two seconds just for demonstrational purposes really we get the reference to our material again and we set scalar parameter value make sure that it has the proper name so just go over and copy paste it and then we suddenly set this to a value of 0.4. So it'll be scrolling four times as fast after two seconds. 
and we'll be able to see that indeed after about four seconds it will cut over a little bit because of how the panning works it's just kind of a limitation uh, of the panner but you can see that we have a dynamically uh, changing thing for this material and we can obviously also then maybe uh, change this to being a different uh, texture so let's convert this to a parameter as well call it texture or text2 because I'm too lazy to type out full words <laughs> and then we delay for another two seconds uh, after this and we set a texture parameter value which will be again just be smart and copy this over don't be a hero don't manually type it because you're gonna make typos and you're gonna get confused as to why things aren't working uh, and then we'll change that around to being uh this thing over here so now what we'll see is we'll have a material after about two seconds it changes speed and then after two more seconds it changes the actual image so you can do whatever you want really now right because you can write a shader to do whatever you want we can do some like wacky stuff um instead of like doing all of this uh with like the dynamic materials uh we're gonna kind of keep that uh for what it is uh but instead maybe what we do is we uh change this let's start uh from pretty much uh, nothing let's take a linear gradient here uh, and if we put that into the u gradient you can see that that's a zero to one so put that into a if node if a is less than equal to or greater than uh b we'll give in a certain value so let's make those different colors we only actually need two colors uh if a is greater than b so if the linear gradient is greater than our value i uh, will make it black and otherwise we'll make it a random color that we set here like green and of course we can make this into a parameter as well call that color and then if we set this to 0.4 you can see that we effectively are making an hp bar right? that fills from left to right now if we then for instance uh multiply that value by half of the v gradient we also have an hp bar that has a little bit of shading to it maybe half of the v gradient uh plus a quarter just so that it isn't as black and now we have a little bit of shading to this you can shade this however you like obviously but just to show you that we can now write shaders to make our widgets look however we want. And here we have our kind of weirdly badly shaded HP bar. And once again, translucently, like opacity is entirely supported as well. So we can even like desaturate so that this is a just black and white value. And then use that to also drive the opacity. Uh, so that way we don't have that blackness if we don't want that. With all that, the sky is the limit. Your creativity can go wild with writing shaders for whatever it is you are doing. So be creative, uh, do your thing, and have some fun creating some super cool animated widget visual. And just to be super clear, I'm doing this on an image now, but you can do this on anything that takes in an image, right? So I have a button here. If I want the button to look different, what I can do i can just set this image here to being our um ui material and the button will then also render as that ui material at least the contents of it we also have uh, a bit of an edge to this that's the outline setting uh we can just make the outline zero width zero and then we have our button rendering as our material so this isn't limited to just images anything that takes in a styling information will work and we still can very much then tint this as well right so ideally maybe what you would do is make your shaders in a grayscale and then you can apply a tint on top of those with this and a very big thank you to all my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials there's a link down below to the patreon page to support me or alternatively as a youtube member and a huge thank you to my cave big brain tier supporters which care more for coding than impulse control earl monsterville erno my cave students tier supporters oiku 
and my cave Digger Tear Supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.